clues after the previous talk, because a lot of what I'm going to talk about uh, is, uh, I use the visualizations of, uh, that artists have, have rendered, because we don't know what they look like. And so the, so the, this, there's a lot of astronomical art in this, in this talk. And so the, the kind of the premise of this talk, and what, what, what we're going to step through, is that the, when, the, when you look at the laws of nature and, and the initial conditions of the universe, we're going to talk about this, the, 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 if you change things just a little bit often, the, then uh, the life as you know it is probably going to be very easy to just change things a little bit so that at the, the density of the universe is so small that atoms never interact with each other. Or that there are no heavy elements, so there's, uh, so there's essentially no chemistry. And so this just puzzles, uh, puzzles any scientist. And so I'm go going to kind of present one hypothesis for what this might mean. It's a bit controversial. And so the, the starting point for this talk is, uh, is that we, we know a lot about the, the roughly like how the universe evolved from when it was a second old. We actually have observations or indications of what the universe looked like when it was uh, just a second old, and then all the way till till today. And so we could roughly say what happened over that huge 14 billion year time span. And one of the reasons we can do this is that if you take a telescope that's sensitive to uh, to one centimeter white, so we're our eyes. Our eyes can see hundreds of nanometer waves, so much, much shorter, 10,000 times shorter light uh, wavelengths. Then, uh, 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 so if you look at these much longer wavelengths, um, the, 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 the universe is dominated at these wavelengths by radiation from, from when the universe was a hot plasma, from the Big Bang. And in fact, there's a, there's a hundred times more energy in this one centimeter band than there is in, in all other bands, all other wave bands, like all radiation emitted by stars in the history of the universe is less than a hundredth of the energy that we see at one centimeter when we look at the sky. And so, the, and so we've taken a picture of this. Uh, so cosmologists have really studied this radiation, looked at different directions, and then, and, whoops, yeah. And this is what the, and th this is what it looks like. And so this is a 2D projection of this cosmic microwave background. And so this projection is very similar to like if, if you took the globe, the, so the Earth, the Earth is a sphere, and if I if, if I made a 2D projection, the the Americas would be here, and Europe and Asia here, and Africa there, and you could turn that around. You could look out at the sky and look at different angles, and this is what you see. So this is again a, a, just a 2D projection of, of of a surface, a spherical surface, um, and the and then every and so every pixel here is telling us about how much radiation we're getting from different locations on the sky. And, the, and you can see that there are differences. So, so the red, there's, there's a little bit um, um, less radiation, and the blue, there's a little bit more. And these differences are telling us that there were, there were inhomogeneities in this radiation that we're seeing. And this radiation is coming from when the universe was 400,000 years old. And the, there, so there are small inhomogeneities in the universe, small fluctuations in the amount of matter from place to place. And the size of these fluctuations are part in 10,000. So the contrast in this picture has really been dialed up so that we can see the fluctuations. And these are the fluctuations that grow into us. And so, the, and so one thing that cosmologists try to do is they try to mo model how these fluctuations grow. We know we think we know the laws of physics to, to evolve them forward. So we put this on a giant computer, supercomputer, and we hit go, starting with these little, little matter fluctuations from place to place that we see from when the universe is 400,000 years old. And we hit go, and, the, and gravity does its job. This is mostly gravity, and it causes regions that have more matter to get denser and denser because the pool of gravity is larger when there's more matter. And the and the, the regions that have the most matter, those are what become galaxies. Uh, and and we, we run these simulations, and you you get you get galaxies, and and you get stars, 
and uh, you don't resolve everything. And so if we think if we could, we had even bigger supercomputers, we'd get planets. And uh, and so the and so we kind of know the story from from, from the, how we map from these fluctuations till today. But in order for this story to work, the the the, the it seems like the the conditions for the universe that allowed galaxies to happen seem seem very tuned. And so that's that's the theme of this talk. And so the, just to kind of illustrate the. The, the, so some things have these fluctuations. Now, I'm going to mention what we think it is later on. But so there's these fluctuations in the universe. It's 400,000 years old, and then you have gravity. But if the fluctuations ah, aren't big enough, so if they're too small, then the gravity can't do enough by today. You don't have anything in the universe. If the fluctuations are a little bit too big, the um, uh, uh, and I should say, uh, if they're a little small, and even a factor of 10 would totally get rid of all galaxies. A factor of a few would make a big difference. So if they're a little bit smaller, nothing. If they're 10 times bigger, the universe becomes a lot more chaotic. Well, probably a lot harder for life to, to exist. If they're 100 times bigger, these, these two blobs become black holes. And so they, the, these fluctuations were set up so that gravity could, could become us. true that we would not exist if there wasn't something called dark matter. That might sound really crazy, because uh, like we don't even know what dark matter is. We, we have ideas, probably some particles that we haven't yet produced in the lab, but the thing that makes dark matter special is that it doesn't respond. If there's radiation in the universe, it is not pulled around by that radiation. Whereas Everything that we know, electrons, nuclei, the radiation just pulls them around. And there's so much radiation in the early universe. So when the universe was 100,000 years old, there's, there's as much energy and radiation as there is in everything else. So the radiation just pulls everything around. And, uh, and, and if you didn't have something to lay a base or to keep hold on to things, if you didn't have dark matter, then you, there, would, there wouldn't be any fluctuations. And uh, so you wouldn't have galaxies. So to the, we owe our existence in part to the fact that most of the matter in the universe is the stuff called dark matter. Um, that's also weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another another coincidence is in the, if you've taken a physics class, you may have learned that there's this symmetry. There's, for every particle, there's an antiparticle. Um, uh, and the and if an antiparticle and a particle came together, it's bad. If I had a gram of stuff, I'm not gonna. I have a really bad joke here, so I won't read it. If I, had, if I have a gram of stuff, and I bring the uh, matter and antimatter bring it together, that's as much as a, as a throw to a nuclear bomb. So, so, like, so, so, so if if we had matter and antimatter in this room, it would be really, really, really bad. Um, but somehow. Symmetry in the early universe, and made it so that there was a billion asymmetries between matter and antimatter, and then everything, all of the antimatter found matter and annihilated, and we were just left with the matter, and then and then we could exist. But what? Why? Why did this happen? Uh, I mean, we don't know, but we needed it to happen. Okay, next coincidence, and oh, I should also say I'm just like really skimming the surface on this. I, I, I'm a cosmologist, and so I've given you some of the cosmology coincidences, but there are just, it's kind of ridiculous how many coincidences there need to be for, 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 for life. Um, and so, okay, next. The, I told you that gravity, I start with fluctuations, gravity makes galaxies. This is not quite right. So the gravity makes big balls of gas. And then gravity stops there. So you're left with all of these giant gas balls in the universe. Uh, once gravity has done its job. And so the reason that there's no dark, so the, and these gas balls are dark matter and they're, and they're the, and ga the gas we know. But the gas we know has a really special property that it can 
it can emit photons, and as it loses energy, it will cool, and then it will contract, and then it gets a lot denser than the dark matter. Uh, and, and that's why galaxies are made out of gas. They're not made out of dark matter. Uh, but in order for gas to be able to radiate, it, uh, it turns out that you need, you need, a, you need some, a light particle. Uh, which is, so we have electrons, and we have, have nuclei in the universe, and that's most of stuff. And the electrons are really good at radiating because they're really light. But you also need something really heavy. You need something that's a thousand times heavier, so, and that's where the proton is. If they, if they were, we don't know why they're a thousand times different. So like the, well, we don't, we can, physics can't predict what the, ma the mass, masses of these particles. These, these are parameters that we, we haven't figured out how to understand. But somehow it was tuned so that the gas could cool and form galaxies. And you, I think, like at, at the very least, you need you need a galaxy to have life. Uh, so like that's like uh, it's just too diffuse otherwise. All right. Okay. Next. So this gas is cooling, and it, it cools into discs. And, and I'll, I'll tell you also why the galaxies are discs. Big gas ball, and it's you rotating a little bit. But then as it's... Matt, you, you need know, the mic. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is dangerous. <laughs> okay, so big gas ball, but like a, like a, like a, like a, a, a ice skater. Like if I ride in my arms, I start spinning faster because of conservation angular momentum. Start with these fluctuations in the early universe, and contribution and angular momentum gives you disks that look like galaxies. And so it's, all of this physics is super easy. And, uh, and then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, but it doesn't stop in a disk. The gas keeps cooling and cooling, and then it somehow fragments on a solar mass scale. And a solar mass scale is, is a scale where fusion can happen. Like if, if things were much smaller than a solar mass, it, like, so you could get all of these things that are the size of stars. If, they were, if the fragments were a lot smaller, you wouldn't have fusion. You would, and you wouldn't have, the, the, you wouldn't have stars powering light. Uh, and it also, you need, big, you need 10 solar mass things, because the 10 solar mass things make heavy elements. And heavy elements are really important. We're not, I, should, I didn't tell you, but the universe starts off with just hydrogen and helium. So you need to, you need to form something larger and heavier than hydrogen and helium. Um, and coincidentally, it's also there's there's like a miracle that carbon is even produced in the universe. But, but that, that's another story. <laughs> and, and then uh, the okay, so then you have these. The, the, and why are ten solar mass things? So they, they, they so they big make heavy elements, um, and then they explode into the supernova. And like as far as we can tell, supernova like even in our universe, this thing barely gets enough to explode. And, involves like so much physics. It involves something called a neutrino, like which isn't important for anything else. But if it didn't exist in our universe, supernova wouldn't explode and we wouldn't have anything but hydrogen and helium up here. So, so, so like so, somehow our unit our universe knew that it needed neutrinos. Um, so 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 that stars could explode and, and, and make you know then then, then you need that for Earth. Um, okay. So now we're we're getting we're getting we're getting kind of to the end, but uh, the, okay. So then, uh, so so it turns out that there's another thing in the universe. So there's dark matter, and it's just one dark thing, and dark energy, and that, there's another dark thing. Most of the energy density in the universe is in dark matter and dark energy. So we like, I mean, maybe cosmologists really suck. We don't know what. what like, I mean, we kind of have ideas, but. Um, but okay, what we think dark energy is is the uh, the, the back, it's energy in the vacuum, and so then we go and we calculate how much energy in the vacuum there should be, and we make a small mistake, and it turns out our mistake is is off by a factor of ten to the hundred twenty, <laughs> and um, but somehow the vacuum energy is much 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 smaller. That's a big number. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, but it turns out if, the, if there was a factor of two more dark energy in our universe, dark energy is like this anti-gravity. It pushes on everything. It makes the universe expand a lot faster. Um, and so if there were um, if there were a factor of few more dark energy, structure wouldn't form. You wouldn't have galaxies, which is weird. So so, so uh, and as so a string theorists have. 
come up with some solution to this, which is that they find that the typical amplitude of dark energy in the universe is 120 times, 10 to 120 times larger than in, in our part of the universe. But that we live in a part of the universe where it's 10 to the minus 120, at least unlikely, so that the, and this dark energy fluctuates from place to place. Um, and, so that, and so maybe this is pointing to the universe being, being much bigger. Um, and so that brings me to the, this hypothesis. Uh, Maybe the universe is much, much larger than is, is observed. And the reason um, the thing seems so fine-tuned is that we can only exist in a very special part of it. And at some level, this doesn't seem that controversial. Like, we, it makes sense that we're not existing outside of Earth's atmosphere. We're outside of our galaxy. The Earth's atmosphere, like Earth, is just a very, very, very small fraction of the universe. Right? The universe is 14 billion light years across. Um, Earth, Earth is a very small fraction of a, of a light year. Very, 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 very small. <laughs> I, I, was gonna, I would do that calculation, but I didn't so much fear. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, so maybe at large scales in our universe, and stream theorists think that this might be the case, that, they have, that in their theories this work, this kind of happens. That like on large scales, other things, the amount of dark matter, amount of dark energy, and the like amount of in matter, in matter, all of these change, and we live in this really special spot. And I would say that if you've been, uh, in addition to everything that we've, I've shown you, I think there's some stronger evidence that this is the case. And so we started off talking about these density fluctuations in the, um, in, in, in the early universe. For the 400,000 year old universe, we see these small density fluctuations. And it turns out that cosmologists have a theory for what, and it's a, I would say it's a very successful theory for what created these density fluctuations. And, and in, in particular, the theory is something that's called inflation. It's probably one of the most profound theories out there in my opinion. Um, and so the, and the story kind of goes that there was some particle in the early universe that, uh, um, it, that print, it printed these fluctuations, um, involves quantum mechanics, etc. Uh, uh, but it, and it really explains the properties of the flux, these density fluctuations we see in the universe. It's really successful. But the, it's, the way this theory works, it predicts that the universe is, or is very, very likely much, 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 much larger than our universe. And in fact, in many, many versions of inflation, it predicts that not only is the universe much, much larger than anything we can observe, but it predicts that the, the universe varies from place to place. Most, of the, most parts of the universe ha, um, are expanding much faster than our universe. There's no part of the universe. There's no uh, galaxies, no anything. And so I, I think like, it's, not, it's not crazy to think that our universe is much, much larger than, than it is. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Precise definition, but I, I so I define it as 
the being that the the properties are, of our universe, the physical laws, are different in other parts of space space time, and uh, and so the and so everywhere we look, universe looks the same. The, the laws of physics look the same, but the laws of physics seem very fine tuned. And so this is an explanation for why, if, if there were many parts in the universe, then then you can exist in that fine. Then the the, the reason we, we find ourselves in this fine tuned location is because that's the only place we can exist. Everywhere else, life can't exist. And so that's kind of that's the hypothesis. So that's that's the argument why um, why it might a multi-universe a multiverse might be likely for to, to explain these coincidences. Yeah, so uh, I heard you talk about these like coincidences that were like so small of a chance that we would get here. But then I also thought that the universe was like practically infinite. So I wanted to know if in a practically infinite universe that maybe existed for, I don't know, maybe forever, isn't it like, don't these coincidences have to occur at a certain point? You know, aren't they bound to occur? So this is the thing we don't know. We don't know what the size. Is. So we can only see things that have been traveling for the age of the universe. So roughly, we could see we are 14 billion light years away. Um, and so the and so the and that's and that's big, maybe. But the, but we don't know. Like if it if it is it if it is it or does it just terminate? You know, like on kind of that scale. And and so the and and so this is. Uh, I, I, this, I think there's, the subtlety is not only that the, the, uh, this is predicting a much, much bigger universe um, than, than what we see, but that it varies from place to place so that, so that uh, there are regions where life can, can exist. Back there. Um, if the theory is true, and Yeah, this is a really good question. This is this is the principal reason why people hate this theory. <laughs> it, it is essentially a theory uh, arguing that we that we are not going to be able to understand everything, and some things are like the electron mass and the the value of dark, the amount of vacuum energy, the dark energy, is uh, is is uh, is a kind of a random thing. And, uh, but uh, not, no one said that we should be able to understand everything. Like I, I think that that has been the hope of physicists, but it's not. It, I, I don't think there's any reason to expect that nature will be that kind of us. So I guess I let me first. Oh, I just got it. Uh, sorry, I totally forgot it's a repeat question. So okay, so the question is something like, um, are there other big bangs in the universe in in this multiverse picture? Uh, that, and so I first like to say that okay, what is the big bang? The big bang is that the is essentially maybe it's a bit of a misnomer. It is the statement that we had this hot plasma in the early universe that. Um, and, and, and everything appear, is expanding um, from, um, with time. And so the, if you extrapolate back, you have some kind of singularity. But we don't know how far back you can extrapolate. The inflation uh, kind of naturally happens when the universe is something like 10 to the minus 30 seconds. So, it, so, so maybe you can extrapolate back to that point. At some point, like 10 to the minus 34 or 40 or something, I forget. Uh, uh, then, then um, we don't even know how to calculate things, uh, or maybe, maybe string theory is interesting. Um, the, so, so the, yeah, yeah, I guess in essence there are big things happening in different regions of time uh, in, um, in, in, in like kind of in this picture for reasons that maybe I'm not, I'm not going to, I won't go into because I think I, it, it's going to, it's going to be a little bit too much, but, um, but yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. To the theory of infinite multiverses or a set number that matches the particular study. 
So I would like the first like to say that I don't. I'm presenting a hypothesis, and I don't. Oh, let me. I'll repeat the question, and then, then I'll say this. The, <laughs> sorry, I'm really terrible at repeating the questions. Uh, so the question is, do I ascribe to the theory of there being an infinite number of places, multiverse, uh, or number of universes, or the um, is there a finite number? And um, I and so. Uh, the, so the, I think this is a like this is a hypothesis that for what the multiverse uh, the, uh, the, 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 the this multiverse theory that I presented that um, and this is not my I, I would also say that I usually work on more mundane cosmology than this but <laughs> the the so the although I am writing a paper because that's related but the, the so the um, so, so the, the, I would say that I don't know. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the. I mean, I don't think we can. Uh, we can't know. We can. All, we can make. High, so uh, let me just say one other thing. That was that. The ten, so the, there is there is a prediction for how many different places places in this multiverse. I think there's called vacua. Um, the, and that, that that's based on this cosmological constant. So there are theories that um, for that how uh, that you need to be greater than some some amount. And, and the claim is that you have there are ten to the five hundred. Um, Sorry, I was looking for seven. Forty-two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, please. I was, I was wondering if there are any theories that uh, interpret dark matter and dark energy as uh, forces or particles from parallel or otherwise hidden dimensions or universes and stars. Yeah, so the, there's a question of whether there are theories of nature that interpret dark energy or dark matter as forces um, uh, uh, or, or particles in some other, um, uh, other dimension. And, and and the answer is uh, is yes. Um, the and um, the um, uh, and, and, uh, and in particular, and I'm not a string theorist, but string theorists like to, to there's some, there could be some dimension that we just can't access that's very close to us, and uh, and in that other dimension that dimension that we're not able to access, there could be some 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 other particle that that. Uh, and uh, like so, like well, sometimes this is called like Kahoot's decline, like matter models. Yeah. So uh, you uh, mentioned that it's space and time that's uh, separating the universes. Does that like kind of take away uh, the idea of possible? I sorry, you, you trailed off at the last. Uh, so this, uh, you mentioned that in, in between the universes, it's just uh, it's space and time. Does that like uh, take away like the idea of? Um, I guess, uh, so I'm not going to repeat the question only because I don't know the answer. I, think, you know, I, 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 don't, have a, I don't have a great picture for what this looks like, other than it, it, it would look different than our universe. Alright, keep, go, keep going. Two more? Okay. Two. Yeah, these spaces are connected. That's right. Yeah. The question was, are this, this, the spaces in this multiverse connected? And the answer is, is yes. Star Trek and Star Wars. Last <laughs> question. <laughs> I, I think I'm, not, like, I'm a nerd, but I guess I, I haven't gotten into that either. I've been really upset by the quality of the, sort of, um, the Star Wars movie. <laughs> Somewhat of a follow up on hers. Um, they're connected. Are they contiguous? Is there a barrier between them? Is it at the end of the track? Yeah, so I think all of these questions are even the. Uh, Starting with the gentlemen's over there are like are are related and um, it depends on the picture. So in the inflation picture, most of the other places in the universe, those are the they kind of meet 
so this is just a, this is this is uh, this is the multiverse from this, that occurs in inflation. The uh, mo most of the places in the universe are are expanding much much faster than, than our place in the universe, and so they, they differ in that respect. Um, and so, but they're they're connected, but you can never get to them because the um, they're expanding away from you so quickly. That's right. So they are like a way of saying that is our horizon. We can see out to like, or the light can travel some distance, and our horizon never intersects these these regions typically. But there are people who write papers about these these um the, these other pockets of the universe colliding with ours. And you could in the CMB, the the first picture I sh I showed you. Maybe I'm just going back way too far. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 so people look for collisions of some bubble universe with ours. They look, for, which, and it should look like a, like a, like a, a like a, a, a circle or something like that uh, in this in this cosmic wavy background. And there's the, there's no indication that this is the case. Although this is also it's, there's the the predictions whether that this should occur are are. are uh, our sketch. So. <laughs> okay, so I've already asked the question, but um, statistically, how probable, in your opinion, do you think it is that another part of our multiverse has uh, intelligent life? Um, so the question is, how probable is it that another part of our universe has intelligent life. And so the, the, my answer would be, well, first, in our universe, there are, you know, ten, there are 10 billion stars in our galaxy. A lot of these have planets. There, there are a trillion galaxies that we can see. And so, the, um, and so that's, uh, that's already a lot of planets. And so I, so I would say in our universe, it's very likely, like, I, I would be really surprised if there wasn't life in other parts. But then I, I think the same probably goes here. Like, um, uh, if there, there's no reason to think that we're unique, and so there, there, there are other places in our multiverse that, uh, that, that, that I would expect that way. I think it, it, like it would, it would be just too fine to, like, just for, for us to be doing the only multi, multi, multi region in the multiverse. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> that, uh, that has like. <laughs> All right, that's the last question. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. And thank you all so much for coming. We will see you next month, December 20th, for episode 6 of Carl Sagan's Cosmos. See you then.